reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and led them up this high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from this mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Can I sit just on the edge here yeah. so I can do that? Sure. I record the homilies. We are here on this holy mountain. And this is the place where God comes down to meet humanity. And it's beautiful to be able to celebrate Mass here. We see it's one of my favorite places in all the Holy Land. We're surrounded by all these angels, aren't we? It reminds us that we are in communion with the angels and the saints every time we celebrate Mass. And it's on, the whole high, it's on the high mountains that God throughout the Old Testament times and even the beginning of the New has come to meet his people. Because the mountain obviously is the highest point on earth. So where could you be closest to God and closest to heaven than on a mountain? And throughout history we can see God doing special things on a mountain. Obviously Abraham made his sacrifice for Isaac, right, on the mountain. Moses, we know, was up on the mountain to encounter the Lord in the burning bush. Back up on the mountain again, God gave him the Ten Commandments. And today we celebrate when Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and encountered the Father on the holy mountain, this holy mountain. There's something beautiful, too, about this experience when you encounter God. It is overwhelming, and we don't want it to, to end. Peter, James, and John were in awe. They were even terrified when they were here experiencing God on this mountain. And, and Peter says, Lord, let us make three tents to commemorate this. Let, let us, because he wanted to stay here, you know? Let's make one for you and one for Elijah, one for Moses. And what did Jesus say? No, nope, come on, we gotta go. So what do we do as a church centuries later? We build the tents. <laughs> one for Jesus, one for Elijah, and one for Moses. We do exactly what God didn't want them to do. And we build these three places, right, to commemorate the three of them here. And that's okay. It's okay for us years later. But at that time, Jesus is like, no, no, come on, let's go down the mountain. We've got to go back down. i got things to do. But they wanted to stay here. And I think we all understand that, don't we? When you have an experience of God that is so powerful, you don't want it to end, do you? You want to hold on to that moment as long as you can. If you've been on a retreat, right, before, you just, you don't want it to end. Little kids, you know, when they're at maybe their cousin's house playing and they're having a great time and they're there all day, the families are together, and mom and dad say, come on, it's time to leave. And the kids are like, oh, no, can we stay just a little bit longer? Just like Peter, James, and John, right? <laughs> nope, come on, we gotta go, Ah. I've noticed, too, that some of the pilgrims here, that as we've been in these different sites and you've encountered God in, in a special way, Tears are coming down your eyes sometimes, and the tears of joy, though, tears of healing. You smile, you're enjoying the experience, and you don't want it to end. 
And even though it's the first day for the main group coming last night, today's the first day that we're starting. I hate to say this, but it's going to end. Before you know it, we'll be going back to our homes. Just like they had to go back down the mountain and go back to their ordinary lives after encountering God. And you'll get back and you'll say, I wish I were back there. But here's the thing that we need to recognize. That we have to go on with our regular lives. The time for the special time to be with God forever will come when it is our time. When God says it is time. Until then, we have ordinary things to do. But we are strengthened in the ordinary ways of life by this experience. Just as the prayer says that this was given to Peter, James, and John to strengthen them for the scandal of the cross. Right? But it's more than that. This also strengthens us because we have a glimpse as to what it's going to be like for us when this journey is over and the journey in the kingdom of heaven has begun. That will never end. You know, obviously we got here a little late. I am so sorry. Mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxi culpa. It will not happen again. But you know, Steve was like, come on, we got, we got a time factor. But if you take notice, when Jesus would come up this mountain, he didn't have to plan, right? He didn't have to say, okay, let's see, we're going to meet Moses and Elijah at about 12 in the afternoon, so that means we have to leave at this time. And so he didn't have to do that, right? And they didn't have to take a plane, Elijah and Moses, to meet Jesus here on this mountain, right? How did they get there? Just like that. They appeared. Boom. It gives us a glimpse into the glory of what the resurrection will be like for us. They saw Jesus transfigured. They saw him in his glory. A little glimpse of not only what it is for Jesus in heaven, but what it is for us in heaven, because we share in his resurrection. And to see him shining, we will be like that. We will be like that. We will be sharing in the glory of God. And we won't have to travel by time and space, taking steps at a time and worrying about time factors. No, we can just appear and reappear anywhere we want as Jesus at the resurrection, right? The road to Emmaus, he was there, disappeared from their sight. And as soon as he left this mountain, Moses and Elijah disappeared. That's what it's like for us, a little glimpse of the glory of the resurrection. And so this experience is given not only to Peter, James, and John, and the apostles to strengthen them, it's given to us to strengthen us. So as we continue to live in the ordinary times of life, that we will know the glory that is ahead of us. And so I say to you, the challenge is to find God in the ordinary of life. After Christmas and Easter, right, you take down the decoration, it's like, oh, it's back to ordinary time, everything's plain and blah. And the challenge is to find God in the ordinary. But I assure you, God is not only present in the glory of places like on the Mount High Holy Mountains, God is also present in the ordinary. Because in just a little while, he'll come to us in ordinary bread, and he will make it his presence to us. So God always meets us in our ordinary, in the ordinary lives. Until that time, that we continue to know that we never have to worry. We don't have to come to a mountain to encounter God, though it's wonderful. God is always with us, Emmanuel, no matter where we are throughout our lives.